Okay. Here is Professor Jayant Narlikar. He is known for very good science fiction. Of course, people know that he is a scientist himself, an astronomer and astrophysicist. Uh, but he is also known for very good science fiction, which he wrote first in Marathi, then in English, Hindi, and it is translated in many languages. Uh, I am his wife, Mangala Narlikar. I am a teacher of mathematics. And we are asked to give this little film explaining what he means by science fiction and what induced him to write it and generally his opinions about science fiction and the similar things that are happening. So let us start. Can you tell us what you mean by science fiction? Well, my perception is like this. Imagine some scientific idea. It may be a, a real thing happening in the knowledge of our understanding of our science, or it may be speculative. But this idea we want to convey to the uh, reader and in that process, what has to be done is choose a story medium. Because if you just describe science to the reader, he will not be un understanding it or he may not like it. Uh, he will find it boring. So as I often say that you put some bitter medicine inside a sweet, exterior, sometimes the science may be considered very difficult, but when you put it in the form of a story, the reader easily understands what you want to say. So you want to present it as a sugar-coated pill in short? That's correct. Okay. Now the point is... Uh, no. And uh, which are the science fiction stories that attracted you first? When did you start reading them? See, my earliest reading was um, H.G. Wells, who had uh, written a, a very beautiful stories. And, and one of them, which I liked very much, was individual, this uh, a man who could disappear by coating himself with some medicine. So this kind of thing is called Invisible Man. That was the name of the story. And when did you write? Uh, when did you start writing science fiction yourself? Well, <clears throat> Well, I, <coughs> well uh, I should say that uh, uh, I was uh, attracted to science fiction as a method of conveying science through literature. And my guru in research was Fred Hoyle, who can So Fred Hoyle was a good science fiction writer. So I thought what he has done in England, being a scientist, he has written good science fiction. I could attempt in India where I would use uh, um, Marathi language, my mother tongue, to start with. So this is how I took on this dog. It so happened that when I was back in India in 19, around 1974, there was a competition for writing science fiction stories, uh, not very long, about 2,000 words. And 
this was organized by marathi vidyan parishad and the purpose was to choose the best three stories and in this kind of competition i had sent my own story and just in case they might know my lang handwriting and so on i chose if pseudonym yes. not real name narayan vinayak jagtap and i wrote uh, this story in marathi and my wife yes i remember that i remember that <laughs> because you asked me to write it in my handwriting at that time we could not type on the computer and uh, people at marathi vidyan parishad already knew him well and they had correspondence by letters so they knew his handwriting as well so he wanted me to write it in my handwriting and send the story under a different name that's what he did so uh, as it happened that story got first prize and when i was told uh, as in my new pseudonym that uh, i have been the prize winner i wrote back to the marathi vidyan parishad revealing myself that is telling them that it was me who had written the story and did not i did not want it to be a in in it should not in put some undue advantage to me so anyway that is how it started and when i when that story got well known uh, one uh, incident uh, occurred which uh, made, made me very enthusiastic that was durga bai bhagwat who was the pres president of the marathi sahitya sammelan she no noticed she took note of that story and in her speech she uh, actually said uh, said that it was a good uh, beginning for having a new kind of literature as part of marathi so he encouraged she encouraged me to go ahead with more such stories and you uh, you always wrote in marathi first is that right uh, that's right i uh, tried writing in marathi and then uh, translated it in english yes. and in hindi and many other languages of, of course the other language translations were done by others uh, and can you can you tell us about how you graduated from short stories to novels and who are the other people who encourage you to do this yes uh, as i was <coughs> mentioning durga bai bhagwat endorsement um, may, may went a long way to encourage me to write more and the uh, magazine called kirloskar which was uh, always experimenting with new things mukund rao kirloskar that's right so they uh, mukund rao kirloskar was the editor and he asked me he in fact told me whenever i had a science fiction story in mind uh, to write it and send it to kirloskar magazine so i did that uh, i wrote a few stories one after the other and uh, uh, they were published in kirloskar some of them were published in other journals uh, like diwali numbers and maharashtra times uh, was also uh, encouraging so this way i wrote uh, a, a fair number of stories then shripu bhagwat who was a leading publisher 
from Mao's Prakashan. Yeah, his, uh, 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 Mao's was the name of his uh, uh, firm. And the Mao's Prakashan uh, also, they published my first collection of stories in the form of a book. And that book was published around, I think, 1980 or so. So that book also received good support from readers. And I feel that Sripu Bhagwat, who was always experimenting with different forms of literature in Marathi, he was a good uh, person to try my ideas on, and he was always encouraging. Can you can you uh, give your own uh, ex um, opinion about what is good science fiction and what is not good science fiction? Well, un unfortunately. <coughs> we find there are a lot of examples uh, which are of bad science fiction or is which one says uh, not science fiction but are uh, confused with the science fiction genre. So what it means is the following. Supposing in some film, some movie, uh, you have a situation that uh, there is a uh, horror incident. I mean, it may be a horror story. And that horror story is often interpreted as science fiction, the horror being caused by science. This is actually uh, un being unfair to science. And such stories are called I would call uh, horror stories, that they are not real science fiction. Then similarly, you have a softer version of it in the form of fairy tales. In fairy tales, there are magic things happening and people uh, ask whether they are like science fiction. So no, because there is no mention of science, behind those uh, incidents, we therefore cannot call them science fiction story. So that is uh, the kind of what one should not call science fiction or what one could call bad science fiction. So in short, if there is some kind of magic which cannot be explained in scientific way, then it goes in the realm of fairy tale or if it has got some ghosts and unrealistic uh, characters appearing, then it will go into the horror story. Is yeah. that right? Right. But I, I want to tell you of a very, <coughs> very good science fiction story, very short one, but it will uses a scientific idea uh, in the form of it, it might, it, it, it is it may look like a fairy tale. In fact, there is a um, fairy in that story which uh, helps the prin prince uh, in that story. The prince is uh, trying to find uh, where his intended wife, the princess, is hiding. She had been put inside a fort. And that fort was uh, about uh, six kilometers away. Now to go there very quickly, the fairy gave the uh, prince magic boots and said that you can, uh, each step will take you 10 kilometers. So you, you can very easily do the six kilometers. The prince took the shoes, put them on, and then when he took the first step, it took 10 kilometers. So he went past where the, um, uh, the, 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 the princess was uh, supposed to be imprisoned. 
So he came back again and he didn't know how to go six kilometers with the help of that uh, those shoes until he, uh, he remembered his school geometry. The school geometry said, for construct a triangle whose side, one side is six kilometers, the other two sides are uh, 10 kilometers. So you go 10 kilometers and then uh, in a slightly different direction, you return 10 kilometers, you find you are six kilometers away, provided you have a side, a triangle with three sides, six, six, 10, and 10. So with the help of this kind of um, geometry, uh, he was able to reach the castle very fast. This is an example of how scientific idea can be brought in. This is a story where you are using your elementary knowledge of geometry. You can construct a triangle mm. with sides 6, 10, and 10. So that's, that, that's good. Uh, can you now tell us how we can have more readers interested in science fiction and also more writers who can produce good literature in this time? Well, uh, obviously, I would like good literary people, people who like write good literature, to get interested in science fiction. They don't have to be scientists, but they should, could be aware of what is happening in science, and they should then consult maybe some scientist friend who can explain to them what that scientific discovery is about. So in this way, they can learn a lot more about uh, scientific description and then they can use it to write stories. Since they are good professional writers, they will do a better job I feel then I can because I did not start life or uh, did do much work as a scientist, a science uh, writer. A fiction writer. Maybe, maybe you can give here to illustrate this point uh, your own experience with uh, E.M. Foster because he had shown you his science fiction rather hesitantly mm -hmm. about the machine stops Morgan. E.M. Foster? Yes, uh, I, I should tell the example of E.M. Foster, who was a famous uh, writer whose book, The Passage to India, A Room with a View, etc., are very well read and very well known. So one day, <laughs> actually, I was living in King's College for a few years as neighbor of E.M. Foster. So we used to meet quite often and he would ask me various questions about science. He himself was not a, a person who had learned science at any level. So he was very dissident, diffident to say something, but he always wanted to know more. So when I told him all these things that were happening, he one day came and I said, uh, do you know I wrote a science fiction story? I was very surprised because I had not seen that particular story, whatever he was referring to. So I asked him, where, when, do you, uh, when did you write and what is it? Can I read it? So he said the story is called The Machine Stops. He told me where it can be found. And I went and had a look. I read it. It was a beautiful story. And uh, this is exactly an example. I was just now saying that good literary people, if they understand some ideas of science, they can write a much better story.
So that is one example. So a good writer, a good author, should first get a nice scientific concept, like E. M. Foster. When he just imagined that all the machines stop. All the machines stop. Then what happens to the civilization? What happens to the people and their work? So he constructed the story on that That's particular right. idea. So it was yes to show how if we come to depend on mechanization too much, yes, we what might run happen? into problems. So you can create a probable situation using one scientific idea and then build your story on it. Yeah. That is a very good example. And uh, how do you think, uh, can you induce scientists themselves to write stories? Yes, I think uh, we, we can uh, hope to get more scientists writing. I mean, the, the best example I know of is um, my teacher, as I mentioned, Fred Hoyle. So I feel uh, when scientists write, they have to be careful that they don't end up writing a research paper. But what, they, what they should do is present the ideas that they want, want to talk about in a very subtle fashion so that the reader will read and read but he will not uh, appreciate the fact, he will not hear the fact that this is something like a lecture in a college. And the main idea should be understood by the reader rather of easily. It should be easily understood because it if it is not understood, then the yeah. reader will either leave it or consider it again as a horror story. Yes, that's good. And, uh, can you tell us about your uh, uh, translations? Because you first wrote in Marathi and then some of them you translated in, into English yourself. And yeah, I wrote in Marathi first because there is a shortage of science fiction stories in Marathi. So I thought that was the best place to uh, talk about my, my work. And later, uh, I thought that uh, some of these ideas may be be better known to larger class of people. So I translated it in English. So my, several of my sh short stories are translated in English by me. And subsequently, they were translated in Hindi and various other languages. As, as I as I know, they are also translated in Bengali and Kannad, for example, and in some other languages. So you have your stories translated in really many languages. Yeah, I should mention here that among the distinguished non-scientists who wrote science fiction was Satyajit Ray, the producer of Pathir Panchali and various other excellent films. So Satyajit Ray uh, was one of the rare people. Can you uh, give an example of what he wrote? Yeah, I think it, uh, there were stories, stories in Beng Bengali. Okay. He wrote it in Bengali. He wrote it in Bengali. And maybe you can also tell how uh, your guru, Fred Hoyle, turned into a science fiction writer. What was the purpose of his first novel? Okay, uh, that, that is a very interesting. interesting situation. Fred Hoyle wanted to discuss a scientific idea that th there are clouds of gas in the interstellar space, that is in the space between stars. And the uh, idea was that these uh, cl clouds contain organic and inorganic molecules. When he wrote this idea into in the form of a paper, uh, the scientific journals did not agree to publish it. They felt it was very speculative and therefore they would not like to have it uh, as a scientific paper. 
So when he found that he couldn't get it published, then he wrote a novel called The Black Cloud, in which this idea was a fundamental basic to it. And he wrote a very interesting plot and the whole book was a uh, book for reading uh, in your spare time and it was not a scientific uh, technical monograph of any kind. So it was a brilliant uh, way of presenting an idea in the form of a novel. Yeah. yeah. So what happened was the uh, uh, discovery of uh, such clouds ultimately was done about 10 years later because uh, the astronomers had special telescopes which could detect molecular radiation. That was why uh, then the people realized that what Fred Hoyle had written as a science fiction was actually happening, happening in real life. So that is a very good example where a seemingly outlandish idea of a scientist, which at the beginning was not accepted in scientific field itself and was presented in the science fiction form. And later on, it was found that his idea was actually correct and was corroborated by the evidence. Uh, so I think it is also a very good feature of a good science fiction that whatever is projected in the story can actually come into real life or comes to be accepted later on, like Arthur Clarke's. Yes. And his, Arthur Clarke was there, Asimov is there. Yes. There are people who have perceptive science fiction. So they can project into future and whatever they are imagining about future really comes true, like mm -hmm. the satellites that Arthur Clarke had imagined. So sometimes a good, rich imagination of a scientist can come into real life as well. Yes, can you can you can give example yeah. of your? Uh, uh, I I had written a science fiction story called the comet. Dumaketu, and that particular uh, story involved the uh, episode that a comet was heading towards the sun, uh, as all the comets do, uh, but on the way it will meet the earth, and it so happened that mathematical calculations showed that the uh, comet would strike the Earth. If such a collision occurred, uh, most of the life on the Earth would be destroyed. So to avoid this, to prevent this happening, what can one do? And the, uh, the uh, finding was done by a Bengali uh, amateur astronomer and he sent all this information of what he had found to the uh, what you call the International Astronomers, uh, Union. Astronomers Union which which keeps record of all comets. So <clears throat> they are uh, and their uh, staff and this, other scientists, they verified and found that this was going to happen. So how to avoid this? And they had a lot of discussions in international forum. And finally, they decided to have a small, uh, what I would call space bubble. That yes, is, uh, it's a small, uh, kind of carrier of a nuclear weapon uh, going uh, towards where the sun, where the uh, comet. comet was coming from. 
and it would meet the comet, and then it uh, we would send a message and, and get it exploded, and the explosion would divert the comet, not break it, but divert it. So, and if it is diverted slightly, it is, then becomes a safe comet. It won't destroy yes. any of life on the yes. Earth. So this was done, and it was successfully uh, averted uh, the uh, problem that uh, the the uh, difficulty that people were facing. Now, when I wrote this uh, article, the, this book story, uh, I added a little bit more by way of contrast. I said that the uh, wife of this finder, the amateur astronomer, astronomer uh, who was uh, a, a devout lady. She was uh, persuaded by astrologers that this is going to be a very serious case for the... Unholy. Yes. So to avoid this, they said you have to do a lot of yajnas and various religious things and she uh, as and they said that the uh, her husband who had found the comet he should really be doing it so she asked her husband to what to, that to, puja. to do the puja and the yajna and he did not believe in all this nonsense and he said, I don't waste time on it. So that is not the way to stop it. So she went back to the astrologer and astrologer said, oh, it doesn't matter if he doesn't do it, let his descendant do it. So his grandson was 10, 10 year old and he was asked to do the Vyadna and that, that was done. So uh, after the comet went safely away, uh, the uh, astrologer, not the astrologer, the finder of that comet, uh, who, who had uh, been uh, helping the scientists with all the information, he said, look how scientists have finally solved the problem. And the uh, lady, his wife said, no, no, it's not, it's not the scientists. It is the uh, astrologers who have produced this kind of uh, effect by performing yajna. So the, uh, this story ends by presenting to the teacher, to the reader, the, the contrast in yes. our Society. Society. In there Indian people, culture, there is this yes. contrast. Yes. There are some very good scientists, yeah. people uh, who are rationalists and who are excellent scientists, but there are also people who go after superstitions mm -hmm. and who still follow some uh, uh, queer and odd things for getting what they want. So it's, uh, I think. Uh, do, do, do you suggest that the scientists also try to remove these kinds of superstitions somehow? Well, <clears throat> well scientists could debunk a lot of us ideas by uh, experimentation or by talks or by various other special examples. So I suggest that scientists have a lot of work, even if they don't write science fiction, they should do science popularization, that is popularize science and try to remove yeah. the uh, different superstitions, the, the different type of free, superstitions. Free the society of all such silly superstitions. Yeah. So uh, with, with this message, I think we can, uh, end this interview and see how the 
readers and viewers like it. Thank you.